Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. We've seen it at racetracks and performance arenas in previous videos. When horses are used for entertainment, they suffer, and the film and TV industries are no exception. Throughout the history of human movies and television, horses have nearly always been one of the most frequently sacrificed animals. In Hollywood in the early 20th century, horses were often used to add dramatic flair to movies. I believe that at this moment, you've thought of some classic scenes of cowboys riding on horses to shoot out, or avoiding enemies and riding across ravines. Unfortunately, the treatment of these beloved creatures has not always been humane. The fate of horses was rarely cared for. They were often viewed as unfeeling, disposable animals. The horses were routinely whipped by stage drivers. They were forced to climb up and down steep hills, and they were forcibly driven through raging rivers. Horses were forced to pull heavy loads in the blazing sun. They were spurred, shot at, forced to jump through windows, and ridden through burning buildings. In addition, there have been many abuses that were directly fatal. Yes, cruel people eagerly recorded the unnecessary death of horses for the purpose of so-called art, for the sake of less boring entertainment. On the set of The Charge of the Light Brigade in 1936, to make the horses and riders look like they were being shot by enemy fire, filmmakers rigged wires to trip the horses while they were galloping at full speed. Some horses died shortly after breaking their necks, while others broke legs and were euthanized. The American Humane Association has fought for animal rights since 1877, but it was not until the tragic death of two horses during the filming of the 1939 Henry King film Jesse James that the AHA was given legal rights to monitor the treatment of animals in films. In order to shoot a fierce chase scene, the director raced the blindfolded horse onto a sloping greased platform rigged to tilt and plunged horse and rider to the water below. The stuntman, knowing what to expect, survived. The horse was ridden off a 70-foot cliff and broke its neck in the fall. A second horse followed and suffered the same fate. Following the public outrage against horse cruelty on movie sets in 1940, the AHA worked with the Motion Picture Producers and Distributors Association, now known as the Motion Picture Association of America, to establish animal protections on film and place AHA monitors on movie sets. Unfortunately, the codes established to protect animals on film were made voluntary in 1966, putting horses' lives in danger once more on the set. The American Humane Association attempted to monitor the treatment of movie animals from 1966 to 1980, but because film companies were no longer legally required to keep them there, they frequently refused to allow the AHA on their production sets. During that period of time, frankly, animal abuse in filmmaking grew again, said Gina Barrett, former director of the Western Regional Office of the American Humane Association. The film that forced the movie industry to return to animal safety standards was Heaven's Gate, perhaps the most notorious example of rampant on-set animal abuse. According to the American Humane Association and other sources, many animals were brutally slaughtered while making the film, including a horse that was blown up with dynamite. Other animal abuse reports from Heaven's Gate include real cockfights, horses being tripped, cattle being cut, and chickens being decapitated. So in 1980, the controversy surrounding the animal action in Heaven's Gate prompted the Screen Actors Guild and the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers to contractually authorize AHA oversight of animals in filmed media. The ongoing expansion of the AHA guidelines for the safe use of animals in filmed media has raised the standard of care for animal actors worldwide. Today, when a movie featuring animals is monitored and approved by the AHA, it's given the right to use the trademarked phrase no animals were harmed in the end credits. Furthermore, technological breakthroughs have created safe alternatives to risky action, allowing filmmakers to maintain their creative vision without compromising the welfare of animal actors. 
The AHA encourages directors to use computer-generated images or mechanical animal substitutes in any scene where an animal might be at risk of injury. Steven Spielberg's War Horse in 2011 is a good example of how mechanical and digital horses are used to create convincing images on screen while keeping real horses safe. The story should have ended there, with a happy ending, but unfortunately, that was not the case. In 2013, a Hollywood Reporter investigation revealed disturbing account after account of injury, death, and cover-up on huge Hollywood productions as the AHA, charged with monitoring, turned a blind eye. Three thoroughbreds died during the filming of HBO's Luck. A Bengal tiger nearly drowned on the set of Life of Pi. A husky dog was punched repeatedly by its trainer on the set of Eight Below. The epic The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, saw two dozen animals die from exhaustion and dehydration, mostly sheep and goats, while 14 horses were injured on the set of The Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian. Despite the injuries and deaths, the AHA did not further investigate and eventually gave those films a carefully worded seal of approval. The rationale behind the AHA's decision to allow the disclaimer is questionable. And it's really ironic that they went from being protectors of animals to being complicit in animal abuse. The only thing you can be sure of is that in the movie business, cash is king. And as long as profit margins and production deadlines dominate, the well-being of animals will suffer. So we need more effective supervision and regulations to ensure that no more horses or other animals will suffer for human movie entertainment.